Chinese Stitches, The Life of Medical Pioneer Vivian Thomas, written by Gwendolyn Hooks, illustrated by Colin Bootman. Needles didn't scare Vivian Thomas. In fact, he designed the ones lying on the operating table in front of him. The instruments were small and delicate like a toy, but these needles weren't toys. In a few hours, they would help save the life of a little girl. Vivian checked the instruments carefully. They were sterilized, razor sharp, and ready for a brand new type of operation that Vivian had invented. If it worked, the little girl would live to crawl, play, and grow strong like other children. But would the operation work? Vivian Theodore Thomas grew up in Nashville, Tennessee. Vivian's father was a master carpenter who taught his son how to measure, cut, and seamlessly fit together pieces of wood. By the age of 13, Vivian was working alongside his father and earning enough money to buy his own clothes and shoes. He put the rest of his money in a bank to save for college. From a young age, Vivian dreamed of studying medicine. With three colleges and a medical school for African Americans, Nashville was the perfect city in which Vivian's dreams could come true. In October 1929, the stock market crashed and the Great Depression that followed caused panic, hardship, and heartache throughout the United States. Banks lost their customer savings and were forced to close. Vivian was one of the unlucky people who lost all his money. He had to start saving for college all over again. Jobs were scarce for carpenters such as Vivian and his father. People could no longer afford to buy new houses or repair old ones. Luckily, one of Vivian's friends worked at Vanderbilt University and knew about a job opening at the medical school. Vanderbilt was an all-white university. Vivian knew that the school would never admit him as a student, but he hoped working there meant he was getting closer to his dream of studying medicine. The next day, Vivian met with Dr. Alfred Black Black Blalock about the job. After a brief interview, Dr. Blalock took Vivian on a tour of the lab. Chemical smells tickled Vivian's nose. His fingers itched to touch the equipment with fascinating names such as barometer and blood gas manometer. Dr. Blalock said he needed someone who could teach to do anything I can do and maybe do things I can't do. Vivian listened carefully as Dr. Blalock talked about his research projects. One of the projects captured Vivian's attention. Dr. Blalock explained that if a person was seriously injured and lost a lot of blood, his or her body sometimes went into shock. This meant the person's blood pressure became dangerously low because too little blood flowed to the body's organs, such as the heart and lungs. This often led to the patient dying. Dr. Blalock was researching treatments for these shock patients. As Vivian listened, he also asked questions about the different procedures the doctor had tried. Dr. Blalock was impressed with Vivian and offered him the job right away. On Vivian's first day at work, Dr. Blalock asked him to put an animal to sleep to prepare for a shock treatment. Vivian was uncomfortable with the idea of using animals for research, but Dr. Blalock explained that their research could save thousands of lives. So Vivian weighed the animal and calculated how much medicine it needed to fall into a deep, painless sleep. Then he set up the blood pressure equipment. Under Dr. Blalock's supervision, Vivian learned to conduct experiments and write lab reports detailing each step. Dr. Beard, another doctor in the lab, loaned Vivian medical textbooks. He told Vivian, it was nice to be able to do a thing, but it was better to know why you are doing it. It wasn't long before Vivian was completing experiments from start to finish on his own. Vivian's surgical techniques improved with each operation. Just as he had learned to fit pieces of wood together seamlessly, Vivian learned to suture or sew blood vessels together seamlessly. Dr. Blalock was impressed by Vivian's tiny stitches. Sometimes Vivian assisted Dr. Blalock with an experiment. On other days, Dr. Blalock assisted Vivian. Vivian was happy working as a researcher until he learned that his official job description was janitor. White men with the same duties and skills as Vivian were called research technicians and earned more money. Vivian was insulted. He was not a janitor. He told Dr. Blalock that he would not continue working unless he was paid the same as the other technicians. A few days later, Vivian noticed his paycheck was much better. He now earned about the same as the white technicians. In 1941, Johns Hopkins Hospital in Baltimore, Maryland invited Dr. Blalock to become chief of surgery. 
He accepts it with one condition. His research technician, Vivian Thomas, must be invited too. Vivian didn't want to leave Nashville, but he knew he would be fired from Vanderbilt as soon as Dr. Blalock left. Many of the other doctors were not happy that Vivian had been working independently as a researcher. Vivian accepted Dr. Blalock's offer. He was excited to start his new job at Johns Hopkins as surgical technician in research. But Vivian had a hard time finding a nice home for his family in Baltimore. The better houses and apartments were for whites only. It took months for Vivian to find an apartment. Johns Hopkins was much more segregated than Vanderbilt's. There were whites only and colored cafeterias and restrooms in the hospital. Vivian was the only African-American worker as a researcher. The stairs and whispers in the hallways were worse than at Vanderbilt, but Vivian refused to let the prejudice of others interfere with his work. In 1943, Dr. Helen Toussaint, a pediatric cardiologist, visited Dr. Blaylock's lab. Dr. Toussaint treated children with heart problems. Many of her patients were born with a heart defect that made their skin look bluish. Their bodies did not get enough oxygen, and over time, the children died. Dr. Chossing called these small patients her blue babies. Most doctors refused to do open heart surgery on a child. They believed children couldn't survive such an operation. Even so, Dr. Chossing asked Dr. Blalock to find a way to operate on her heart patients. Dr. Blalock was too busy with his own patients, so he assigned Vivian to do the research. Vivian headed for the Pathology Museum to investigate the collection of blue babies' hearts. He knew that a healthy heart pumps blue blood to the lungs to get oxygen. Once the blood is full of oxygen, it turns red. The red blood flows back to the heart and is delivered to every part of the body. With blue babies, however, something else was happening. Vivian noted the four defects in the heart that block some of the blue blood from reaching the lungs. This meant the blood continued to circulate throughout the body without its oxygen full up. How do you get more blue blood to the lungs? It was a mystery Vivian was determined to solve. After a few months of experimenting, Vivian realized that the solution might be a procedure he and Dr. Blalock had perfected at Vanderbilt for a different problem. The procedure involved creating a shunt between two arteries. If they sutured an artery coming from the heart directly to an artery going to the lungs, it would create a direct connection for the blood to make it to the lungs. Then the child's body would have all the oxygen it needed. Vivian tackled the next problem. Most needles were too long for a, tiny, a child's tiny chest and blood vessels. He needed to make needles small enough to use on a baby. Vivian, Vivian snapped off a half inch long piece of a needle. Holding the eye end with the clothespin, he filled the other end of the needle, he filed the other end of the needle to a razor sharp point. Now he had a needle short enough to stitch together tiny arteries inside a child's chest. Vivian tried out his procedure and new needles on research animals. He found a way to attach two arteries successfully and have an extra blood circulate into the lungs before it flowed back to the heart and then throughout the body. Dr. Blalock assisted Vivian only once during his experiments. On November 29, 1944, Dr. Tossing called Dr. Blalock about Eileen, one of her blue baby patients. The child was so sick that she would die if they did not operate on her immediately. Vivian knew his operation worked on animals, but would it work on a little girl? The next day he would find out. Dr. Blalock was going to perform the procedure designed by Vivian. The morning of the operation, Vivian went to the operating room to check the instruments. Vivian headed back to the lab, but Dr. Blalock insisted he return to the operating room. Dr. Blalock asked Vivian to stand on the stool behind him and guide him through the operation. Some of the other doctors grumbled. What could Vivian possibly know? But Vivian focused on Dr. Blalock's hands and the baby on the table. Dr. Blalock opened Eileen's chest. Vivian's own heart thudded with worry. The baby's blood vessels were so small. Were his needles tiny enough? Dr. Blalock began the procedure. Is my incision long enough? He asked Vivian. Yes, Vivian responded. Dr. Blalock began a suture in the wrong direction. Other way, Vivian cautioned him. Ninety minutes passed. Finally, the operation was over. Would Eileen survive? The baby's lips are a glorious pink color, Dr. Tossing said. 
Eileen did survive, and slowly, over the next few hours, her skin went from blue to a healthy pink color. After two more successful operations, Dr. Blalock and Dr. Chaussing wrote a scientific paper describing their innovative surgical procedure, which they named the Blalock Tossing Stint. National magazines such as Time and Life praised Dr. Blalock and Dr. Tossing. Vivian Thomas's name did not appear anywhere in the paper or news or magazine articles. As news spread of Dr. Blalock's success, two or three operations a week soon became two or three operations a day. Patients came from as far away as Europe to have the procedure. Vivian remained standing on the stool behind Dr. Blalock, coaching him through more than 150 operations. In 1947, Dr. Blalock and Dr. Tossing were nominated for the Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine. Although they did not win, doctors from all over the world traveled to Johns Hopkins to observe and learn the new heart procedure. When Dr. Blalock was busy, the visiting doctors went to Vivian with their questions. Vivian graciously shared his knowledge and skills. Vivian Thomas was not publicly acknowledged for his brilliant research and sur surgical talents until more than 26 years after the first flu baby operation. On February 27, 1971, the Old Hands Club, a group of doctors who had trained under Vivian, presented a formal portrait of him to Johns Hopkins Hospital. It is displayed across from Dr. Blalock's portrait. In 1976, Johns Hopkins University awarded Vivian an honorary doctorate degree and appointed him to the faculty as instructor of surgery. Although he never had the chance to attend medical school, Vivian's research pioneered open heart surgery on children. Today, about 40,000 children are born each year with heart problems. Because of Vivian Thomas, these children now have a chance to live full and healthy lives.